It'll run better if they're ugly and mismatch. <laughs> okay, we are ready to install our front oil seal, or front main seal. I'm going to show you something though. This is the one that came off. Okay, I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, but right here in this spot, it's all chafed out. So we could could have had a potential oil leak there. Luckily it was holding on the inside there, but had the inside gone, this thing would have been pouring oil just dried out when it was running. As you can see here, two pieces of wood, some basic tools, and you can get this out, put it back in, easy peasy. What you're going to need, flathead and a rubber mallet. It works best. Come in on the inside, give it a couple little whacks. Just like that. Just that easy. Okay, we're going to clean up in here real quick and then we'll install a new seal. Okay, at this point, I like to take a little bit of orange or black. I'm going to put a little bit around here. A little bit of insurance, don't hurt. You don't need a lot, so this is a very conservative amount. None of these oil pans ever are true, so uh, what I like to do is just make sure I have a little bit of insurance here. Don't like oil leaks and 350s. They they leak even when you do everything right. So okay, just smear it around so there's a nice little even coat. When you smash this in, you'll have a little bit come out. In your kit from Felpro, you're gonna have four things: two water pump seals, a rear seal for the oil pan, black silicone, of course, a seal. Okay, here's a tool I like to use to smash seals in. As you can see, it's a piece of fence. Uh, it's got a bow in it, and the bow is really nice because it can really give it a nice, good, even uh, whack a mole. So, right at this point, we're going to whack this in. It's an old piece, but not the same. Got the job done. That's why I like using cedar, it breaks well. Make sure it's all nice and flat and flush. Now, as you can see it is, we have a little bit of RTV coming up. Just make sure it's flat. If not, just take the edge. Smash it down. Take the edge and smash it down. see nice and flat done in less than five minutes pre lube this with some molly we'll do that when we install the harmonic balancer but for now this cover is ready to go and last thing importantly make sure this is nice and clean okay so what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of orange then the fell pro gasket and then the uh, little bit more orange and I try not to touch with my fingers don't want to contaminate it it'll squish and generally these areas are not leak points in the 350. It's everything down below and back that's usually the problem. Okay, let's there see if go. that works. Yep, drop it down, slide her in. Cheap horsepower people say about these 350s. I say they're reliable as everything else. Alright, get a couple bolts loaded. Let me grab my nice clean bolts. Let's just grab whatever they had in the old 350 bucket. They probably just do what we do. Yeah, throw all the 350 bolts into a coffee can. It'll run better if they're ugly and mismatch. <laughs> it's all the chrome ones that don't get you home. Good, it's gonna smell like new gaskets breaking in. Yeah, I oh, love that smell. I do too. So everybody's like, mm, what's that smell? I'm like, mm. Smell hard work. <laughs> I'm just like, new parts. New parts. Damnest. Well, not 
I either miss a bolt or don't put, a, put one bolt back in. <laughs> no, you, you got one bolt to go. Right about where the power steering pump sits. Okay, we're going to let this sit for 24 hours or at least 12 tomorrow morning. We're going to come out here and torque this to about 8 pounds. But other than that, with the RTV, you don't want to squish it out. So what I've been doing lately is I haven't been touching the RTV. And I've been leaving it to where it's pushed pushes a little out. Then I come back, you know, an hour later if it was warmer or if it's cold like it is, I'll have to come back in 12 to 24 hours, but do the final torque later. And most of the time I actually have really good results. I don't have comebacks or leaks. So we have repeat business, but we don't have comebacks due to warranty work because that's bad. Okay, at this point we're going to go ahead and torque the timing cover. We've let the RTV set. This is the way I do it. This is my personal way of doing it. Others may argue, but I don't get oil leaks after I do these jobs, so do as you wish. All right, seven foot pounds. Six, I thought it was six. Or six foot pounds, 70 inch pounds. Some um, books will vary. I've read anywhere from six to 11 pounds, depending on if I'm reading a Children's or a Haynes. We're using our new nifty inch pound reader. I just got in the other day. So we're going to give it a whirl, see how it does. Now he's doing a crisscross method. And he's using it every three, three bolt method. So he starts with one, skips one, goes to the third, skips, go to the third. And then do your second pass and it makes for better sealing. That from a GM tech. So what do you think of the new tool? Cool. Well, that's what we're going to start using for now on. We're no longer faking it. <laughs> After I ordered that inch pound reader from Home Depot, then I found one at Harbor Freight. But, you know, Harbor Freight's got interesting quality, so sometimes. I do like this one. I'll put the uh, model number down and the URL link for where I bought it from Home Depot. Because it's really nice to have one of these, whether you're working on four cylinders. I mean, nowadays, inch-pound readings are becoming more fluent, so. I'm just going to go around and make sure. Oop, that's what I do. There's always going to be some deflection after you do this. about ready to put the dampener back on but I thought this would be a great time to show you guys what a speedy sleeve is all right this is used to make sure your front dampener seals because the original factory will actually tear a gouge in the original and I've got one here to show you exactly what this thing fixes this dampener does not have a speedy sleeve and how I can tell there's an actual like speed bump here and this is where the front oil seal literally gouges the line here as you can see here there's a groove it's like a speed pump so the speedy sleeve literally pounds over that now I was taught to take this put it in a freezer for about 10-20 minutes and then put it on and it's a seamless fit now the truck that we're working on has already had theirs worked on so I'm going to show you that one now that one's already had a speedy sleeve this is one without let me show you the one that already has one as you can see here's the speedy sleeve you can literally see the 1000th metal put on there. You can see the rim. This one was done correctly because it hasn't spun. You would put some red Loctite around here. Pound this on, but you can see right here this has probably had, oh, probably a good 18, 20,000 miles. It hasn't started to groove yet, so I'm not going to worry about it this time around. But if we go to gear drive because this thing spits another chain, we may have to put it on then. But that's a note about the speedy sleeve. Now we're ready to install the dampener. After you put a new oil seal on, you want to make sure you don't do a dry start. So we're going to put a little bit of Molly Lube on the Speedy Sleeve seal. It's already been done. You know what I'm thinking? You don't need a lot, Kev. What if this balancer is done and that's why we're spitting chains? That wouldn't do it. You're, you're having an alignment issue between the cam and crank if it does it one more time. 
Now I could have stretched sitting for that seven year period. And not running? Mm hmm. And then us getting hard on it after seven years? Maybe it sat after it was built and then they, you know, got it running and beat the shit out of it, let it sit again. <laughs> and then you get it and we get it running again. But still never cured what the original thing with this engine was, which was what? It stalled a lot, right? Well, you take bad carburetor, points distributor, and a stretch chain, even if you fix the two like we did, we still have that issue intermittently. And just to think all this time, we are fighting the chain, so really if we would have done the chain and we had the motor out, this thing would not need any work at all. Which I agree. But we did that, reason why we did that, because this motor had a different mark on the crank, and I knew someone put that on there because they meant it right so it's one of those things that it was really I wanted to get it running first before I even attempt to do the chain because it's a lot easier to do a chain when it's running than it is to guess if it's been running well, and the other thing is we didn't even think no if this thing was going to run or not. no we didn't get to see it run we just took the word of the guy who owned it who just said it stalled no he was a tweaker too <laughs> Spokane's finest <laughs> it's funny you buy an engine from a straight guy it screws you, but you, you buy the engine from the tweaker. It runs like a, a scolded dog. No, it runs great. <laughs> Normally I would do some weird $2 deal, but someone's already kind of screwed the crank up on this, not us. I mean, I do things right the first time, but um, previous, they've galled the thread and we got an oil leak. So I don't want to stress it like I normally could. We're going to do it right this time. We've got this O'Reilly's installation kit here. It works quite well. So we're going to show you how this one works. The thread you're going to want 7 16 by 20. So you want to get that on there. You want to set up your jack screw setup. Slide your bolt through your tool. You're going to want to put this pretty far up so you can put the spread load washer on there. Actually, this is just a bearing. That's a thrust washer. We call that a thrust bearing, but none the same. It takes the load so you don't stress out the component you're trying to install. There is there a washer? Should have been a one. No. It'll be fine. Okay. Some kits come with a washer, some don't. Doesn't matter. Okay. We're going to remove the kit out of our way. Step one, get your right insert. This one's a 7 by 16 by 20. That's going to take the entire load of your pushing force. This is the correct way to do this. Right, pre lube your seal, we already done that. I like to take a rubber mallet and give it a couple whacks just to kind of help get it started. See, we could just rubber mallet this whole thing on. You don't want to do that. You got to think every time you hit that, the bearings are taking it. It's good for a couple whacks, but no more than that. All right. Put your tool on. Next step, get a really big wrench. Actually, two. Yeah, you're going to have to hold the one in back. You can get them on. That's the most correct way. I should probably be using some real wrenches. But who cares? Yeah, at least they're big. They're like using those AM wrenches. Your main focus is not only to get the balancer on, but also keep the inner part of the tool not to spin while you're doing this, because that's how you strip threads and damage your crankshaft. I mean, how many people won't get the right tools, even though Harbor Freight's made it dirt cheap? Well, this actually isn't actually a um, okay. Harbor Freight tool, just to let you know. This. How far do I have to go? You got a ways to go yet, dude. Remember, this balancer walks. Right there, and get about three quarters of that orange line. Stop, and then you can use your bolt to finish. You have enough thread. The problem with the Chevy 350 is the original bolt just is not long enough to catch. So, what will happen is you'll feel like you'll have a catch, and you'll go to pull, and you'll rip the first two threads up. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, I think you're good there. At this point, go ahead and remove your tool. 
Last step, torque this bolt to 60 foot pounds and that will set your final distance. Oh, well, this is going to work. To find some way to find that thing. Feel like it's got more compression now. Oh, I'm tr I don't have much room to do this. That's why I'm fighting with it. up somehow. Put two bolts back in the front coat. Yep. That's what I was saying. Okay, and then one on the other side of you. So the left side. That's how you get 60 foot pounds, and that's how you install your dampener. Not too bad if you have the right tools, it's a pretty simple job, but if you don't, I mean, you'll cuss with it. So I'm just telling you now, buy the tools. Alright, well, that's Keith and Kevin's repair and restoration tool tip of the day. If you like the content, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.